story, a little bit spooky. I don't know what type of ritual was cast to okay. have us end up here. All right, well, we'll see if you can keep <laughs> running it up. We're still early in the day here. This is Chris's draft here on day one, and it's the first draft. So he's got a long way to go, but maybe a top eight in his future. We'll have to find out. Let's see how he drafts. We'll see how this draft goes, and we'll take the next step after that. But what a great story. 25 years of magic. And I'm now tripping. he's finally running it up. Let's see what he's got here in that first pack. See a Cyclops. Ooh, Ooh an artful takedown, a true fire captain. There was a Narc Amoeba in there somewhere. Artful takedown's nice, though. Oh, yeah. That, that one's pretty tough to pass. It's in a very strong guild. And true fire captain is probably a more powerful card just in the abstract. But artful takedown, you know, it's much easier to cast. Uh, it... Uh, I favor Demir over Burroughs. Uh, Chris May also. Looks like he does. Yeah, True Fire Captain, powerful, but very committing. White, white, red, red on that mana cost is a tough sell. Uh, if yep. you're planning on, you know, you're kind of moving in, and uh, there's a good chance you don't end up playing it. Artful Takedown, you can splash around a little bit. All right, let's see what he's got coming up next here. I saw that his rare was a Pelt Collector. Ooh, Chemister's Insight and Watcher in the Mist. Wow. Just two great cards for him. Watcher in the Mist has just been uh, an, a, an A plus for me as a common. It's you know, so good. Just, it, it's it, so good. It, it, it's got this great body. It triggers all my Surveil cards. It makes sure that I'm drawing things that cost five or potentially six if I have another land in my hand in the coming turns. Just an incredible card. It's got my really favorite spooky power art. toughness. I like those long fingers. The Kawhi Leonard-like. <laughs> it's got 3-4, which is my favorite power and toughness. Seriously, like, attacks and blocks well. Mm -hmm. And Watcher in the Mist does both of those things. It can close out the game if you're ahead or at parity, and it can block. Guild Summit there for Chris. Ooh, here we go. Discovery Dispersal, another good enabler. Now, he doesn't have any surveil payoffs yet, but that's okay. We're still very early in the draft, and... Discovery's really nice. Yeah, Dispersal I, I like can Discus do some work, Discovery too, in the right si situation. Yeah, I mean, it's often just an instant speed removal spell that gets any type of permanent if your opponent's hellbent. Uh, and, you know, even when they're not, the fact is it, it allows you to stay at card advantage level. Uh, you know, you're not losing a card by bouncing one of their permanents. And Discovery's very good at triggering Surveil while also setting up your early draws, making sure you're hitting those land traps, making sure you're curving out. Uh, from turns three on. I'm going to be seeing a lot of Discovery and Constructed, aren't I? You may. I don't know. Two, two mana too, just too for, a, uh, for a cantrip is a lot. A little too slow? It, it may be. I, I th there's, this is the kind of card which, you know, it's also a sorcery, so you can't, like, leave open counter magic. You can't, like, pass ready to, like, syncopate or Discovery. Check this out. He's got a choice between Burglar Rats or Direct Current. And we may be seeing a little bit of a shift here over into Is It, though it's not hard to come up with a kind of a Grixis hybrid deck here. Yeah, um, and, you know, he has that Watcher in the Mist. Uh, Direct Current was really uh, far and away the best card in that pack. Ooh, so. Capture Sphere. That's a nice pickup. That Demir Guildgate would be a great one for him to wheel. But Chris, clearly on the removal plan here. I love where he's at. This is, this is coming around very nicely. Okay, he's going to take Capture Sphere. A Capture Sphere. You Doesn't know, okay. get much better as far as removal goes for blue. It's about as good as you can get. I, I agree. I think Instant that... Instant uh, speed, you know, locks down anything. It, I think Capture Sphere performs better than a lot of the cards that look like Capture Sphere from the past uh, because it has flash and it taps the creature when it enters the battlefield. I like the Guild Gate here for Chris. I see where he ends up going, but uh, I think that would be good. Absolutely agree. Remember, he might end up in Is It, and if he does, he would really like to have a chance to get that Artful Takedown in his deck because it is such a powerful spell. And uh, even just the one Demir Guildgate helps open up that opportunity for him. Now, there's an Is It Guildgate, but packs a little dry for him the last couple. Yeah, I mean, Is It Guildgate, though, uh, that's a card to be happy to pick up in this range. Like, I think I take the Guild Gates higher than most people do. He's going to take the Rubble Belt Boar. 
So he is starting to look even further towards is it. And he could really go in either direction. He could be an is it deck splashing black. He could be a Demir deck splashing red. Boy, these packs have not been kind to him, though. Veiled Shade he'll pick up here, but that's awkward. Right? Yeah, he, to be honest, there just haven't been many good cards no, at all, though. No. Like it's not like it's not like oh, there's this awesome card in this other color for me. No, it's just like the like the pack he took the boar out of. The, the most powerful magic cards were the boar and a guild gate. Yeah, it's true. Veiled Shade was the pickup there, but that's awkward in his deck. Demir Guildgate again, and a pitiless Gorgon. I like the Gorgon here, but I do, you know, <laughs> it's hard to cast. Yeah, well, I don't know. He took the Veiled Shade. Like, he might just think he's Demir, right? Like, that, that uh, direct current might be slipping down the power rankings for Chris as we speak. But he could have also taken a Demir Guildgate and Is It Guildgate, maybe wheel that, uh, that Guild Summit? Is that a plan? A little risky. It's a little risky. It's a plan I'd be into. Yeah. Oh! There it is! The guild summit came back. It came back. <laughs> could have done it. Could have had oh like man. four gates right now in a guild summit. <laughs> I don't know if this deck would have been better, but it would have been sweet. I would have liked it better. Just gonna take a Nar Nark amoeba that came back, though. I have yet to be impressed by a Nark amoeba. Yeah, you know, in my head, I thought that. You know, if I if I'm surveilling like at least like some percentage of my deck, like just getting a one one flyer for free is just such like a, a big swing in a like, game of limited. But then when I've actually put it in these Demir decks, even when I have tons of surveil, like I I don't know, maybe it's small sample size because I haven't gotten to do this enough, but I have I have yet to surveil it into the battlefield and I have drawn it multiple times and I've not felt good about that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just super medium. Well, a little bit of a mess here for Chris. I like the start, but now it got a little muddled in the middle, so he's going to have to sort of settle down in the second pack. But to be honest, from his seat's perspective, I think he did a very good job navigating what was ultimately a pack that dried up a bit in the middle and never really got a whole lot better. So I think he's put himself in the best position here, though I'm a little concerned about his colors at this point, and I think he would be too sitting in the seat. Yeah, I think th there were a few opportunities where he could have taken uh, guild gates, mm -hmm. and uh, you know that could have shored up his mana issues a little better. But uh, yeah. the thing is, his his general card quality is there. He just really needs to find out where he is because he doesn't really have enough cards right now to be comfortable as a Demir player. Doesn't have enough cards right now to be comfortable as an Izzet player. So yeah, yeah spot on. Or enough removal to be a Grixis player, right? So he's mm -hmm. kind of in the middle. But you know what? He's got two more packs to go. Plenty of time to figure out what track he should be on. And this pack is where that's going to happen. So let's see what Chris opens up here and gets past in pack number two. And then the story of his draft will start to come together from that. Also remember, Ari Lack sitting directly on Chris's right. Uh, Ari drafted Selesna. Mm -hmm. So here Chris is drafting all three colors that the person on his right is yeah, that's not I'm drafting. So uh, he found his seat. He knows where he's supposed to be. Well, he found a mission briefing and a thought erasure. There's also an unexplained disappearance in the pack. Yeah, not the most exciting pack for him. No, not, not really, really the most exciting pack for anybody. I mean, Luminous Bonds is good, but... Yeah. Th this is the interesting thing to me, is the card he's pulled up to the front is Piston Fist Cyclops. And if he wants to move hard into Is It, and it looks like he might, that is a absolutely fantastic common for the Is It deck. You can play it in your Demir deck, too. It's, you can do it. It's just not really shining there. Yeah, and, uh, you know, he has that direct current. That's a really good way to turn yep. this on twice. Uh, he has, you know, all of his best cards are blue, and his best black cards are easy to splash, things like Artful Takedown. There's a Leapfrog. Another Discovery Dispersal. Oof. Looks like that's about it, though. Well, he likes the Gatekeeper Gargoyle. If he had taken those gates, I could see it. Here, it looks not super great. Leapfrog is consistent with his last pick, though. Another aggressive is it card. Yeah, I think you kind of have to pick a lane and put the pedal on the floor at this point. So, uh, you know, after that last pick, I really like taking the Leapfrog here. He's going to go for Discovery Dispersal and continue to kind of muddy the waters. Though, that being said, you know, if he's just playing it for Discovery, it goes fine and is it as well. You can still just play yeah. it. 
it is a you know a cantrip which works well with piston fist cyclops. Uh, if you're splashing black, you can occasionally use it to greater advantage. Well, gosh, it just oh, there's interesting. There's a radical idea, but I like sinister sabotage quite a bit here. Yeah, sinister sabotage has really impressed me. Uh, not just it, normally it's like the kind of card you want a lot more in sealed than you do in draft, mm -hmm. but. Uh, even in draft, I've been pretty happy playing Sinister Sabotage. Me too. Um, radical idea, you know, very on theme, though he really only has one Piston Fist Cyclops to really take advantage of that type of thing. Uh, we could also see him. Whoa! What, what is happening? Oh my goodness. Whoa! He just took Parhelion Patrol over Sabotage there. Whoa! That's crazy. Now he's going to get awesome. a dead weight. It's going to pull him right back in. Whoa, baby. I did not expect that. He got me with that one, I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. Chris Hall with the curveball. <laughs> fell, fell off my chair. Yeah. And it's not a big chair either, so. <laughs> All right, dead weight. Well, let's see what happens here. To be fair, again, you know, neither Radical Idea or Sinister Sabotage are particularly exciting. I'm excited. Those are both very playable Oh, yeah, they're very playable cards. Good-ish good cards in those decks. He took a card he can't even cast. Chris is a runaway freight train. He's going to take Demir and Foreman over Command the Storm. So, again, we're seeing a little indecisiveness, right? If you're mm -hmm. going to take the Piston Fist Cyclops out of that one pack, then you'd think you'd take the Command the Storm out of this pack, right? You're going to take the Leapfrog, the Command the Storm, rather than going back towards Discovery, Dispersal, and Demir Informant. Now, it's not the end of the world. He could still just end up with a very good Demir deck, but he's going to need to kind of focus in a little more to make that work, I think, to, to get maximum value here. And boy, stop it with that Parhelion Patrol stuff, right? You just got, you just got yeah, to take you the blue. Yeah, can't do that. That's the thing. It's like, you know, it's one thing to take a card that you think your deck has trouble against when, mm -hmm. you know, you've already got just a pile of all playables, but when you're really teetering and you don't you don't. You're still out in the woods of whether or not you're going to have a full Demir deck or a full Is it deck, or the lands that you need to play Grixis deck. You you can't be hate drafting things that are of you know mediocre power level. Right. So he picks up a Douster of Lights, and it does look like Chris is focused back on Demir here. Well, that Gateway Plaza looks pretty nice, and there's another Radical Idea though. To be fair, Radical Idea in the Demir deck is passable. It, it's not even a card that you really need to prioritize. Though in Is It, I, I really like it. Yeah, I like it a lot in Is It. I uh, agree with everything you said there. I, I think I just take Gateway Plaza, though. Me too, man. Like, I'm a little worried here about being able to cast all my spells, and a Plaza goes a really long way. Yeah. Love that card. There we go. Devious Cover Up, another Radical Idea. Oh, boy, there's a Sky Knight Legionnaire. Chris, don't even look at that thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really late Sky Knight Legionnaire. It really is, though. It the stands latest. out, doesn't it? There we go. Devious cover-up here. Devious cover-up. A little better than it looks. You can actually play that card, and it's not the worst. You know, I've, I've actually needed to play that card to prevent myself from decking. Yeah, same. <laughs> I'm not ashamed of it. Pitiless Gorgon here. Again, pushing himself towards Demir. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Pitiless Gorgon plays, you know, best in Demir. Surprisingly, not necessarily in Golgari. Uh, in Demir, you it makes cards that you can get very late, like Dazzling Lights, decent. Mm -hmm. You know, it, yeah. Dazzling Lights. If you have a bunch of assassins and, uh, or rather, poisoners and Pitiless Gorgons, that card becomes. Wh which quite one would passable. you rather have? If if you had a Demir deck, would you just switch out any Pitiless Gorgons for Hired Poisoners? Like, are they that similar to you, or does that extra point of power and toughness matter? Um, it's a good question. I think I think it depends on how many like ways to win you have. A lot of the time, you'll have a Demir deck where it's like, well, I have all this awesome reactive stuff, but I have no way to win the game. Mm -hmm. And in those types of decks, the Pitiless Gorgon gains a lot of value just as a gray ogre because, mm -hmm. you know, it closes the game faster. But it costs triple the mana. Yeah. It's harder to cast. Primary role is blocking. Mm -hmm. There's a Demir Locket. I, I would much rather have the Poisoner. 
You would than, uh, up front. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm saying that like there no, are corner, case, corner case situations. No, 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 let's not let's yeah. not retreat to the corner case. <laughs> Give me the big picture. You'd rather right. have the poisoner. Yeah, I would rather have the poisoner. Why don't you just say that then? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Pitiless Gorgon, you can cast if you end up green. Yeah. Like early on. I do find myself in that position, though, that you outlined, Jake. Like, Yeah, I that's, why, that's why I, I guess it's it not really corner case, because it comes up like yeah. 40% of the time you draft the Demir. Yeah, <laughs> it really does. Like, I found myself in situations where I was like, had 10 mana, was making my Veiled Shade unblockable. And then attacking and pumping it three times or twice or whatever, you know, like that's not exactly the cleanest, you know, control win condition. But y you kind of scrap it together when your opponent goes, "How many cards in your library?" And you're like, four? <laughs> 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 I guess I should start attacking. Crossed. Yeah, because my plan is always that my Watchers in the Mist are going to clean up, but they always kill them because I haven't really presented anything else worth killing up yeah. until that point. So that's another thing you learn pretty quickly playing I'm not this ashamed, format. Jake. As an aggressive deck, mm. you you kill like the the worst creatures ever it's when you're true. playing against Demir. It's true, and you should just kill them right away. You if, if they're if they're walling you off, preventing yeah. you from attacking them, don't just be like it's not worth using a removal spell on that stupid thing. I know Demir form it. Oh, get yeah. around it. No, you won't. No, you won't. Lava Luminous coil it, that yes. yeah, lava <laughs> coil that Demir form it. It's Luminous true. bonds it. Continue to attack your opponent. If you let this game get to the point where they've got like seven cards in their hand and you've got two and you've been not using your removal because you're worried about big stuff you've already lost yes it's, it's also interesting that it works the other way too they play like a mentor creature where you're like it's a blade instructor i can trade it off for literally any creature in my deck they might get a counter out of it don't do that kill it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> those counters are huge it's funny how big a plus one plus one counter is when you're an attack deck it's just absurd all right pack number three incoming now for chris ha Okay, Dark Blade Agent, Whisper Agent. Ooh, Murmuring Mystic. Hello, friend. I like that one a lot. Yeah, there's also Expansion Explosion, but I'm all about that Mystic life. Same. Yeah, I, I think I think that's probably is. the best uncommon in the set, or at least it's on the very short list. Maybe Price of Fame or something, but Murmuring Mystic is, is such a, a high-value pick. Now, I will say, it truly shines in Is It. Th that's, mm -hmm. to me, where it's just stupid. You're, you know, it, it's, it might be the best card in your deck. Like, it's in the top three or whatever, and it's an uncommon. Um, I in, think it's the it, best card he has so far. I agree. Yeah. But in, in Demir, it's merely great. Mm -hmm. Right? You can expect to get two or three birds off it or something, which is fantastic. You're super happy about it. But in Is It, I feel like I play that. If I get to untap, I'm going to get five or six birds, you know, start jump-starting stuff and, and flood the board. And it can just be my basically my standalone win condition. Another artful takedown. There's also a hypothesis, but, but why, right? You're in Demir. Yep. Artful takedown's awesome. It's, it's on par with hypothesis. I think you just go for the takedown here. I like yeah, I that pick, Chris. Good discipline pick there. Yeah, I think artful takedown also has a, you know, a few interesting applications in terms of the, when you're tapping things down. Know, pit against cards like Piston Fist Cyclops. Like the, the tap part of artful takedown comes up a lot more often oh. than you would expect it to. To use up an activation of sorts. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, because that, that part seems like a bit of a throwaway, right? Yeah, but then it ends up coming up quite a bit. It does, yeah. Mainly just because you're not attacking. There's a Devere Informant and a Burglar Rat. Another Discovery Dispersal. I wonder how much he values the third one of those. A lot of wheel spinning at that point. Yeah. It's a good card, though. So I think he's going to go for the informant here. I would go for the informant. Yeah, it seems like a solid pickup here for his deck. Oh, boy. That'll do, pig. Rebel Belt Bore. Wow. I, I like Rebel Belt Bore in I this format I can't believe he took it there, though. I'm surprised he took that. I'm also surprised he took that. Oh, man, that was, it's just, I'm trying to sort it out. Like, he clearly thinks he's like a... A Grixis deck. A Grixis deck. And he also really likes Rebel Belt Boar because we've seen him now two times kind of go out on a limb a little to pick it over mm -hmm. a card that was, like, super fine in his deck. I mean, Demir Informant, that's kind of what you want to be doing. 
Now, he doesn't have a lot of the payoffs, right, for the surveil deck. Yeah, no spy bugs, uh, not right. even a snitch in sight. He passed one, but yeah. But still, that card blocks well, and you might pick something up. There's a Poisoner and an Unexplained Disappearance. Also a Capture Sphere, so again, multiple good options. You know, if he keeps it up with these removal, maybe these Rubble Belt Boars just end up killing your opponent. Of course, casting them can be an issue. Yeah, so we're really worried about Chris's deck, but it's also worth noting that his deck is just a pile of removal spells. It is. And then, like, and then some Horned Turtles. And that's a recipe for success. Like, he does just need a way to attack and kill his opponent, and like you said... Watcher in the Mist doesn't always get it done. Yeah, I think the part that I just have a hard time with, with the, is with the consistency aspect. Like, for example, you know, I said, okay, he took the Discipline pick before when he took art, uh, Artful Takedown over Hypothesis, mm -hmm. thinking, okay, I'm going to be blue-black. Like, yeah. let's just get this red out of here. I'm good to go. But now he veers back for the Rubble Belt Boar. He just there had multiple good blue options and took Hypothesis, which was the highest power card. But, mm -hmm. dude you got to be able to cast these things. I'm getting nervous about his mana. That Gateway yeah. Plaza has a lot of heat on it at this point. Yeah, and, uh, you know, there were a lot of... Uh, a, a lot of... Is it Guild Gates and Demir Guild Gates that went through him also. Yep. So he, I think so here that's he, something he's got to worry about, too. Yeah, he's got a choice between Hired Poisoner and Burglar Rat. He goes with the Poisoner. There was also a Leapfrog there. There was. Which I, I think would have been my pick, to be honest. I okay. think he need, needs ways to kill his opponent. Certainly got ways to kill his opponent's creatures. There's a pass wall adept. Anything else? Oh, an enhanced surveillance. That's a card we've been chatting a lot. BDM and I have been talking about it and stuff. I'm just not sold on it. Me neither. I just, I, I can't quite get over the hump of it being worth a card. But I've also heard people say, well, when you play it, you like it. You know, you're seeing a ton of cards. You're basically just setting up every draw step to be really good you never run out of gas and that is tempting i've found that it is it's a really bad top deck mm -hmm. um and that's I've had, absolutely the case yeah i've, I've had the, i tried it because i was also told to try it by a friend and uh i had in the two games that i first drew it if it had just been a land of any type you would have been happy. I would have been, like, golden, and instead I had an enhanced surveillance. <laughs> and, like... Yeah, I just don't... don't think it's quite worth a card. Yeah, and, and if you're worried about decking yourself, you know, Devious Cover-Up, I think, is a better option. And I am worried about decking myself. So, interestingly, again, Chris here, on the back end of pack three, he takes a Burglar Rat there, though there was an Is It Locket in that pack... But he has no interest in it. And unfortunately, the gates, Undercity Necrolisk there for him, the gates haven't actually cooperated with him. He's seen a ton of gates late. None of them have been on either of the guilds that he's taking part in here. It's just been a whole mm -hmm. bunch of like Boros gates and stuff like that. And again, we see the Slesnia guild gate at the end there. And that's just, well, maybe, maybe a little unlucky. You know, just uh, you hope at that point to just f pick up like one more gate for your Grixis deck, and he didn't find it. So some inconsistencies there, but I think we can both agree that the power level of his deck is high and the removal suite he has is unreal. Yeah, I mean, his deck is a pile of removal and death touch creatures and creatures with big butts. Yeah. And, you know, it takes a pretty specific recipe of deck to beat that strategy. Yeah. So um, even though his mana's not good, he doesn't really have win conditions, it's still... Like, he's somebody, like, I can't imagine looking at his deck list and being like, oh, I want to play against that guy. Yeah, I don't think so yeah. either. And, you know, based on what we saw from our other drafters, two Celestia decks out there, they're going to have their hands full if they have to play against Chris Hall. We are going to be taking uh, a short commercial break here. When we come back, though, we're going to be getting set up because there are going to be players in the feature match area shortly, and we're going to be playing with these draft decks. Don't go anywhere. We're seeing just a few. <laughs> 